Good morning. Morning, Chair. Morning, Chair. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chair. Okay. Morning, morning, morning. How are you? Good morning, honorable members. Good morning, Chairperson, it's Mandy. Yes, good morning, Mandy, how are you? Well, thank you, Chair, and yourself? I'm good. Chair, just to alert you that you are the only member in the meeting at the moment, but we um, did send reminders to members and um, we just want, um, sent the link, resent the link to members again. Okay, you let me know when they're in there. Eh? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, can, can I check, uh, uh, honorable member, am I in the meeting? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, morning. Am I in a meeting? Morning, DM. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was getting worried that I'm not in a meeting. Do you hear me, DM? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you, Che. I was speaking to Mandy now. She was indicating that I was the only person, meaning that we are two now. So we, we're still waiting for other members to start with our steering committee meeting. Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Okay, DM. Thank you very much. Okay, sure. Thank you. Bye. Recording in progress. Chair? 
chairperson. There are now sufficient members present to start the meeting. Wendy? Chair, there are now members, as, um, enough members present to start the meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, honorable members. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Honorable Sininya. We're now going to start with our meeting. Good morning, Chair. Morning, 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 Oswaka. Mm, how are you? I'm good, and how are you? I'm fine. Long time, man. Very long time. This coronavirus. Yes. I did it all. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, we're now going to start with our meeting. The agenda of the day has been flagged there. I just believe that each and everyone is in a position to, to see it. And believing also that uh, the secretary has circulated it. Good morning, DM and everyone in this platform. Uh, morning, Chair, morning, honorable members. Uh, I'm here, I'm told uh, our Director General uh, is also here with one or two other officials. Uh, oh, th thank you very much. Thank you, DM. Uh, I trust that we are all doing well under this pandemic and we are to proceed with our meeting. But before we proceed with our meeting, uh, there is a concern, a concern of our attendance. Even now we are starting late instead of start starting at nine o'clock. Members of the steering committee, uh, sometimes when they are committed, they don't even inform the secretary of their whereabouts. And it's costing our, our steering committee. We sometimes fail to correct simply because of that. But anyhow, we are starting with our meeting believing that all we are ready for this uh, steering committee meeting, then we'll be proceeding to our full caucus meeting. We invited the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disability to come and brief us today. And we heard that the Deputy Minister is there with the Director General. So you're all welcome. Anyone to adopt the, the agenda? Can we have one member to ad adopt the agenda? I move for the adoption, Chair. Thank you very uh, much, think... Honorable Sminya. Anyone to second? I second. I, second. I, do, I do second. Thank you very much. We are now proceeding with our agenda. And now I'll give the opportunity to the DM to give an input. Maybe after that, she will give to the director, the general, since she indicated that she's with there. Or before we go to that, let me check if we do have apologies. Mandy, do we have any apologies? Um, yes, Chair, we received apologies from Ms. Sharif, uh, Ms. van der Merwe, and Ms. Lengwa. Okay, there are three apologies. Yes, Chair. Thank you very much. But I've seen one apology from the minister. 
that oh, she yes. won't be and with us today, but the DM will be with us. Yes, and the minister also apologized this morning, Jay. Apologies for that. Thank you very much. We are having four apologies. Honorable members, we have four apologies. Chairperson. Honorable member? Yes, Honorable Kamela Bridget. I think okay. the apology. Honorable Tumeling. Yes, I'm saying we do accept the apology because they've been forwarded procedurally to the secretary of the uh, steering committee. The committee, thank you, you very much. Yes, thank you. No, thank you very much, Honorable Tumeling. We are now proceeding over to you, DM. Um, uh, th thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Uh, since this is a preparatory meeting, I, 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 we thank, as a department, we, we appreciate the uh, opportunity. I can just brief honorable members that when we go to a, a full meeting later, I will make an opening uh, statements. Uh, but I think what, what will help with the preparation for now is for our director general just to a, a brief the steering committee on the highlights in terms of uh, gains, challenges, uh, and concerns that uh, she might be have. But in a full meeting, I will make a, a statement. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you, DM. DG, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Um, Can you please good, brief this steering committee? Good morning, um, Honorable Chair and members. Good morning, DM. Good morning, colleagues. Um, also, I would like to request uh, Langwani, um, Langwani Thais, uh, just to take the, the portfolio, sorry, the, the, the committee through. Langwani, just highlights, please. Oh, thank you very much, uh, uh, DG, and good morning to honorables and everybody in the meeting, the DM. Um, what is going to happen? Uh, we are going to make a presentation on the uh, gender responsive planning, budgeting, monitoring, and evaluation implementation. Uh, that meeting is going, to, uh, the presentation is going to give a brief on what uh, the framework it's all about. What is it that made the framework uh, to be put in place? Uh, for example, there was regression in the issue of gender mainstreaming uh, in the country. And then in that regard, the framework was put in place in order to assist in ensuring that there's institutionalization of gender mainstreaming in the country. And that framework is um, brought in a change in a um, the whole system of planning, uh, uh, budgeting, monitoring, and evaluation. And the framework was taken through the process of cabinet until it was approved uh, for implementation. The main area of, of, of uh, feedback in this meeting is taking through uh, the members through the implementation, uh, which will indicate the progress so far in the implementation of the framework. In the presentation of the implementation, uh, uh, the presentation will go through the 10 pillars of implementation, which speaks about the gender responsive planning, institutional planning, policy priority, evaluation, knowledge and evidence, monitoring and auditing, responsive budgeting, uh, other processes, including cabinet and parliament, legislation, performance management, uh, advocacy and communication. All those areas that I spoke about represent the 10 pillars that I'll uh, go through in the meeting. And then from there, on all these 10 pillars that I briefly spoke about, I am going to uh, talk about the progress that has been made in, in, in the implementation of the framework. For example, when we speak about uh, country planning, we're going to give feedback on 
what the department has done with uh, um, working with the DPME, particularly, and the National Treasury in ensuring that the policies of the country informs the implementation that will be responsive to gender in the country, which is very key in the sense that uh, if we don't influence the, uh, the policies, it is going to be very difficult for us as department to reach everybody. But if these key policies are mainstream, they instruct, they give guidance on how to um, ensure that the plans are responsive, the budget and so on are responsive, then uh, we are not winning. However, in the presentation, we also highlight on what we have done as the department to ensure and monitor the implementation. Just to cite example, the department has been doing an analysis of um, a strategic plan and the APP after we have influenced the framework that informs government on how to ensure that the plans are mainstreaming women. So we looked into that and we are, we are picking that the department are now uh, gradually getting there understanding what mainstreaming is, ensuring that the indicators and the targets that are reflected are responsive to the issues of women. So the, the other things that we, we are also doing is, which is very key, it's ensuring that we assist government and provinces to understand, to move from the previous understanding that when we speak about the issues of, of, of gender or women, it is the issue that is going to sit with the gender focal point in the department. So we're moving a, a government away from that. That is what we call institutionalization. We move them from understanding that each and every um, manager in, the, in, in, in every department has a responsibility to mainstream gender. And we are seeing that we are winning that. In this regard, we have meetings with provincial government. We have meetings with national government department where we, we those we did so far. So what, uh, taking them through what they need to do to be able to mainstream. We, are, we have done so much on that part. Although the challenge that will come at the end of the presentation is that the department is small. It cannot reach out uh, as much as it will want everybody to get to understand this matter. But in this regard, the positive response that we have seen from government and provincial government is that they personally initiate uh, the, to call on the department to uh, assist them in capacity building. So for example, you will find that the, a province calling us where they have brought in all stakeholders that are relevant. For example, we have seen them bringing in all departments in the province. We have seen them bringing in state-owned um, uh, companies in the provinces to sit in the meeting and get to understand on what they, they need to do. Uh, in that regard, we find that uh, they get to understand the issue of mainstreaming because the key here is to ensure that the, uh, the plan that they put in place is responsive. So immediately the plan is responsive, then the implementation will automatically take cognizant of the issue of mainstreaming. For example, if you, uh, you are ensuring that you are supporting financial, providing support to uh, enterprises, and the plan says that uh, you set a, they, they set a target of saying of these enterprises, so much must be uh, owned by women, youth, or persons with disability. Obviously, when you are in the process, you are going to take that into consideration. So this is what we are, we are, will be presented. And then it's going to touch on all those pillars, as I have said, and then um, um, uh, in order to really show how uh, the implementation of framework has, uh, has been uh, uh, taking place in the department. I will uh, stop here. Thank you so much, Honorable, for the time and the DG. 
No, thank you very much for, for the briefing. I just hope and believe that in the full caucus, we're going to get more clarity on this. Honorable members, uh, that was the briefing uh, from uh, Ms. Mlais. Uh, Can we interact with it? Um, Honorable Chair, I think, um, yeah, that is the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, DM. Honorable members, can we interact with the briefing? Is this silent meaning that we understand everything, that we can proceed with our meeting? Uh, sure. Honorable Simenia. <laughs> yeah, Chair, let's, let's appreciate the briefing and the uh, um, welcome the brief um, from the department on the on their work that they've done, um, and and the 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 engagement that they had with various department. Maybe just to check with the GM and the and and the and the presenters in terms of their engagement. Um, because one of the things is that the, the responsive budget would become su successful if all the department have, have put uh, um, or the agenda, agenda focal person um, are structures, structured such that they will make sure that they are able to monitor um, <laughs> or influence policies in those department um, and, and uh, whether the, <clears throat> um, there is general agreement as, as this um, policy has been tabled through cabinet that uh, uh, do we have any uh, uh, measures that will punish those departments that are not implementing ju just to check on those issues the structure in terms of uh, institutional arrangement in all the departments and provinces, including municipalities, because some of the departments, they are implementing agents, they are municipalities, and if municipalities, they are not responsive, therefore, um, this uh, good policy might not be implemented, just to check on that and, and the, <laughs> the issue of their monitoring department, have they have enough uh, through the, the institutional arrangement to monitor and enforce um, and, and them as the presidency having the uh, consequence management around those departments that will not implement this uh, framework. Thank you very much, Honorable Simenia. Is there any other question for clarity before I give it to the department. Chairperson. Yes, Honorable uh, Ntumiling. No, I just want to Honorable Simenia, my 
question or process of engagement does include the municipality and because I know that if we have communicated with the provincial government, their responsibilities also to cascade it down to the level of the municipality, whether we are winning or or are there any other challenges because we are on the ground but we can see that there is not yet a um, focus program is not taking that's happening according to the cabinet have pronounced do we have any the dm with us so that we are able to carry it forward. I agree because the first part that I wanted to raise is already covered. I wanted to check the, the whole of all the key stakeholders, especially at the local municipality, so that and then things are not happening on the ground. That is my concern check there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Tomelin. Unfortunately, on my side, I didn't get uh, everything of, of what you were saying, but I will check with the department whether they managed to grasp some of the things that were, you were asking. I had uh, Honorable Ziminia, uh, and I want to give it to the department, whether the DM or the presenter herself or the DG who is going to respond to, to the questions. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. I will ask the uh, Director General uh, Advocate uh, uh, Maluleg to help us to prepare for a bigger meetings, making, taking into consideration issues you uh, raised by honorable members. But what, what, what I wanted just to highlight is that um, we, we, we stand to be guided, honorable members here. I think what we will do as a department, uh, hopefully the DG will guide uh, our presenter uh, uh, to whether it's in place to, to really emphasize the slides where there is an expectation for honorable members to take certain actions within their committees. And you, you will find that as a, as a department, we report, which is typical government thing, you know, the policies, the DGs, cabinet has met, but we are at the point where we are looking for benefit uh, for uh, women, youth, and persons with disability. That the, the, the public purse should impact positively those people. So besides our systems, we, we all really in our committees have to make sure that all our entities, they are tier uh, because otherwise we can regulate forever. The sixth administration will be gone, would have achieved nothing. So we, we, we will explain what we are doing, but through you chair, also just to encourage all members to really take full responsibility uh, to monitor uh, the, uh, the, the, the departments and entities where they sit that they are adhering. Uh, because if we don't, uh, uh, if we don't really bring our own activism on this matter, even the budget when it's presented by treasurer, nobody sit back and say, is this gender responsive? Where, when now we have, been, we have been going through budget votes, uh, afterwards the expectation is that uh, the officials will sit, budget, 
but if there's no commitment, it becomes another talk, another talk year after year, and we don't see where we're going. So what we'll present is to show uh, honorable members what the department is doing. But I've taken longer, but basically our plea when we go back, it will be good to really get the commitment of each and every member to say in the portfolios they are in, in the spaces they occupy, the entities they lead, begin to speak the language of uh, women, uh, gender equality and women empowerment, youth and persons with disability through the public purse. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I will I really allow the uh, DG as you have given us a chance uh, to uh, uh, make input. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, DM, and over to you, uh, DG. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, oh, firstly, the, the second question, we, I couldn't hear, uh, uh, the, it was breaking. So Sorry, DG, <laughs> can you switch off your, your video? And everyone, I don't have the video. When we interact, please, let's switch on the, our videos because oh, our you mean, meeting on. Is, is, is live or on air. Thanks. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. I was saying the, the second question I couldn't hear. Um, she was breaking a lot. Um, however, Langwani will, will respond to, to the to the to other questions. Um, the first one, it, it talked about the gender focal points in, in, in government departments. Now, as a department, we, we are now talking also about women, youth, and persons with disabilities focal points, because the challenge that we have in government. You find that women, youth, and persons with disabilities are under one directorate, and that directorate doesn't impact on strategy, doesn't impact on anything. They use them only on the first, on, on the third of December when it's International Disability Day or, or nine August Women's Month and whatever. And those people are supposed to assist them, are supposed to assist them to, to mainstream women, youth, and persons with disabilities in their departments. So it, it's a big challenge. Now we, we have done a framework which we want to take to cabinet so that it's a cabinet decision, but also on the policy, there's a gender, the national gender policy framework, which uh, um, requires all gender focal points to be at the director level. That was the gender focal point without the other, uh, without youth and persons with disabilities. That is what we are communicating with DPSA to ensure that it happens. In the provinces, there are always OSWs. In the local government, that's the biggest challenge. And I think as, as a department, because of our capacity, sometimes it is difficult for us to monitor because we are just at the national office. We are not, we don't have representation in the provinces and in, 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 in local government. However, the strategy that we're using, we have meetings. I, I've had, I think now, several meetings with the DG of um, a, a DCOC, a Department of Cooperative, um, a, um, Cooperative Governance, so that we mainstream, it's them, we mainstream it in their strategy and they take responsibility to ensure that all local government mainstream issues of, of, of the focal points and the NSP and the, and the um, um, uh, gender responsive planning, budgeting, and, and the, the long name. But before I hand over to Tulangwan, um, as the Deputy Minister had indicated that we request the committee in their committees also, the members here in their committees to address certain things. For example, the 40% uh, proclaimed by the president in, in, in August uh, uh, last year. The departments, when we ask them, the, the answer that they'll give you, and is the answer that I think they'll give to the committees, is that there's no legislation that supports the 40%. I do not agree, and I tell the departments that the triple PFA, uh, uh, um, it says at least 30%. If it says at least 30%, it says not below 30%, but it can be 40%, it can be 50%. So as a department, even yesterday, I had a meeting with the DG in the presidency to strategize in terms of how do we force departments to report so that it's a standing item agenda in FOSAC so that they can report on the 40%. So if the committees can push that, it will really be important. But also in their APPs, uh, in terms of them, literally highlighting women, youth, and persons with disabilities. 
in their strategies and, and AP, APPs. It's important, and the cost that goes to them. You look at the economic uh, recovery, uh, reconstruction and recovery program. When it talks about women, it's a line which says uh, the vulnerable groups will, will benefit. I mean, women are not just vulnerable groups. They're women who are in business. There are women who want to contribute, not just to benefit from uh, the, the, the country's economic uh, plans. They want to contribute and participate and benefit from that, but it is not happening. But the other thing that we, 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 we request, even with the portfolio, our portfolio committee on women, we've requested is that look at, compare the DPME and our department. They are doing nearly the similar work, but our department has a bigger mandate than them because as a department, we, we, have to, we have a role for government, private sector, and civil society. DPME doesn't have to work with civil society, it doesn't have to consult, it doesn't have to do anything. When we come before the portfolio committee, they ask us about equality in the private sector. With the structure that we have, we are structured and resourced to fail. Uh, that department will not succeed as long as it continues as it is. So we are, we are in the process of a, a, a restructuring. So we also request that the committee support us in terms of the restructuring so that we don't even want to be half of what DPMP is, even though its focus is one third of what we're doing. If they can just give us just the little that we request so that we're able to regulate, coordinate, facilitate. I will request a, 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 a Thaisi also Langwani to, 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 to respond to some of the questions if she had the second question because I couldn't, uh, hear what uh, the member was saying. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, you so, thank you so much, uh, DG, for the opportunity. I also did not get the, the second question from Honorable Domaling, uh, but what I uh, catched, she was speaking about uh, how do we roll out to municipalities. I think that is it. Um, and then um, uh, if I have to start with the gender focal point that the DG has spoken about, we also really see that they could be of a help to the department, but we are really trying so hard to capacitate them and make them understand that if they could be able to take that role in their, in their provinces to do what the department is doing, to be able to look into uh, monitoring the plans of the department to ensure the mainstreaming of, of women, youth, and persons with disability in their plans. So that is what we are trying to make sure that it happens when we deliberate with provinces so that we get help as we look into the issue of capacitation of the department. With regard to monitoring and evaluation, the department also does that in a form of a um, and we send a tool to government and provinces and, and they ask them to inform us on the progress that they have made in implementation of the framework in line with the pillars. So in that regard, um, they, they, they will uh, uh, send us the information. The, the, this is the first time that we will be looking into the responses from the provinces and, the, and, the, and government in order to identify the progress that they have made so far. What we are planning to do is to have that report being submitted until the cabinet level in order for gov uh, uh, the cabinet that has approved the framework to look at how far we have gone so far. In, 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 that is another way of in, in increasing the, 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 the uh, responsibility that should be taken by uh, the implementers. Um, I have uh, heard the DM speaking about the responsibility of all and begging uh, the honorables here to take a part in the implementation of the framework. I want to emphasize that uh, by saying that during the process of the development of the framework, we had a very big conference, where, kind of international pro, uh, conference, where we brought in speakers from other countries to share with them what they are doing with regard to this kind of work. And we have identified that Uganda, if I'm not making mistake, they have a process whereby all the plans are approved only by parliament if they have been very clear in how women are going to uh, uh, benefit, particularly the responsive gender budgeting. So they need to, they, they give certificate 
to to the department to say you your plan qualify because we have put on these issues. So I will further want to say we may uh, the the parliament may identify means of ensuring that they they uh, they promote the gender responsive budgeting by a certain means that you could find uh, from your side uh, that should bind everybody else, not only a department of women, because this is the issue of everyone. I also have taken note of the issue that the DM has mentioned to say, we need to emphasize on how we use the PES of government to benefit women, youth and persons with disability. And I think during the next presentation, we'll uh, look into that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to check with the uh, Honorable Ntomeling if whether they've covered whatever, what, what you wanted to understand for now. Honorable Ntomeling. I don't know whether she's having a, a network problem. But uh, also, DG, I wanted to check the issue you raised, the issue of 40%. How is the committee or the, the portfolio committees, how do you want the portfolio committees to assist in this regard in order to, to make sure that at the end of the day, this 40% is adhered to by all department according to the pronouncement that has been made by the president. And secondly, the issue of monitoring when it comes to the local, the locals and the provinces. I, I, I don't know whether I'm correct, but to me, it's like this uh, department in the provinces, it's like a program sitting in the office of the premier. If that is correct, I think this is the other, the other challenge that we're facing when it comes to monitoring. Because as a department in the national, at national level, but going down to the provinces and the locals, we don't have that department, but we have a program. To me, it's like this is some of the challenges that we're facing because the department nationally, they fail to monitor it uh, going down to the provinces and, 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 and local. And mind you, I think all this that you are talking about, it happening mostly at the local level, because that's where we have our, consti our constituency. At the national level, we don't have constituency there, but our constituencies are at the, at the locals. Thanks. I don't know, DG, if you can have a bite on that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I will, I will, I will respond, and uh, I think Ranji also will come in uh, where okay. I've, I've left anything. DM, okay. I think it's... Hey, any hand before the... Um, the good, morning. good morning, and sorry I joined late. Um, I oh, to... Doctor, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, and sorry, I, I had uh, indicated that I will start with the uh, Parliamentary Programming uh, Committee meeting. Um, and maybe you will actually pardon me if I'm going to be asking something that has already been discussed. It's just that I just want to take the opportunity with the DG going to actually be making inputs, uh, just to ask as to where we are in terms of the wage bill, um, uh, whether you're pushing from your side for that bill to be reintroduced into parliament, uh, because for now we're actually worried about uh, gender budgeting, and we're worried about um, the women being in, included in the budget of the country, and also noting the fact that departments will be um, submitting by end of September uh, their APPs. We need to be sure that those APPs, uh, when Parliament does what we call the BRRR, uh, the, uh, the, the budget review process, uh, then they actually manage all, across the board, all committees should be in the position to be looking at uh, the extent to which these budgets are going to be representative of women. But I imagine if we don't have a tight policy that would actually help to guide these parliamentary processes, 
we'll keep on talking about the bu gender budgeting and this and that and find that it becomes very frustrating to actually manage to uh, realize these goals. Uh, but the, the main question for, for now is, what are we doing with that wage bill? I come from a meeting where I actually also lamented about it. But, and, and I'm coming to this platform, I'm lamenting about it because somebody needs to tell us what is the problem with it because that bill is a very important instrument uh, for advancement of the status of women in South Africa because we know it's about pulling out what is in the national gender, um, agenda, national gender policy framework, which was that framework that we really started with right at the beginning, that clearly articulated the agenda of women for South Africa and how we can actually manage to emancipate or to totally, for total emancipation of women of South Africa. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I'm done. Can you hear me? I'm done. Can anybody hear me? Yes, yes we, we can, can hear you. Can. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. someone person that can hear. Okay, yeah. I hope the DG heard because actually the comment was made um, so that you, when you make you, you respond, you can manage to include all of this. Okay, yes. Yes. thank you. Before you, you, you proceed, uh, DG, you know, I was, I've raised my question based on parliament. Yes, we can fight this portfolio committee, but you'd remember that parliament deals with the report that comes already the, 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 the work would have been done. I want to know the monitoring in systems in government where uh, presidencies presidency um, is able to to intervene with the department that they are not implementing this this uh, the plan can be done and the, in south africa we know that we are good in planning but implementation has been the problem so so my my monitoring uh, framework that i'm talking about based on gov Parliament received the report after the work has been done and, and you get an excuse. For instance, I'll give an example. I'm in construction depart, uh, department where they would say women are not there, they are not qualifying, they are not coming forth. How do we make sure within the government system that uh, we are able to monitor and persuade government departments uh, to make sure that uh, there is a system that as, as we address um, this uh, predicament that we have in terms of uh, get women, getting women in the, in the, in the area where this, uh, you, you might have skills, if you want to say, department are even able to make sure that they assist uh, in, in making sure that uh, women are able to go into those systems. Because if we don't have that, parliament at the time we receive a report, uh, anybody can come say, this is our plan, we have planned um, to, to, to give 40% women, but in construction, we don't have women with grade eight or six, uh, this project needed grade eight or six. <laughs> so, so I just want to bring that practicality that as long as we don't have a, a, a monitoring tool within government system, that would say that uh, we can agree that uh, uh, human settlement, for instance, uh, you are building the, 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 the 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 Lesotho Highland project, which needs a uh, grade eight or grade nine, um, we can uh, what what mechanism could be put in place so that we make sure that women participate in those areas uh, before the implementation. When it comes to me, uh, they'll say no, no, uh, chair, the uh, women didn't apply because uh, more majority of women they are at. Uh, grade three or two or one. 
how does government uh, use that the 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 use its capacity and muscles to make sure that we, we bring women from that level to towards uh, 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 um, participating at that level where, where, because as long as we don't close that gap, uh, they'll get excuses uh, as the, it has been previously. So, so the monitoring that I'm talking about based, based on government system, um, uh, and the implementation part, because if you look at our plans, um, we've been our plans have been talking the same thing that we're doing, uh, but we don't get women engineers. We don't get this, this, and that. How do we make sure that we close that gap? And and with this, with this six administration, we can then be able to say, um, this is a framework that we've put in place. Uh, as we started, uh, these are our women were at this point, and then we we have put together the system that assists them to be at this level. Uh, the seventh administration will then say, now women are at this level, so so, so that we have that the tool that the tool that track this monitoring pr processes. Thank you, Chair. It seems as if the chair is kicked out. Uh, Zanella. No, okay. Yes. okay. Um, Zanella. Yes, I'm here. Oh, man. Oh, uh, yes. yes. Take over. Yeah, I was going to say to teach you just to, to to respond, summarize in two minutes so that we're able to to join the the broader meeting. We can also raise other issues on that side. Okay. There's just only two minutes left. Just in two minutes, in the GG, just to summarize. The, the, the clarity uh, questions from, from honorable members. Uh, thank you, um, Chair. Uh, on the wage bill, I start with the wage bill. Um, honorable member, sorry, honorable members will remember that um, um, last year, uh, the leader of government had issued a, 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 a instruction that no new legislation uh, will be entertained. Uh, government departments must prioritize and just bring one legislation and we chose the NYDA Act Amendment because of the challenges that go with it. This year, again, on the 5th of March, um, there was another a, a, a circular that came from government uh, um, leader, uh, from the government business leader, uh, that this year, because of the elections, no new legislation is going to be entertained. So what we now have uh, uh, requested that we be allowed to, 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 to uh, fast track, despite the fact that no legislation is supposed to be a, a fast track is the one on national council on gender-based violence. Though as a department we're working on this bill and actually we're changing a, 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 the name. We're no longer saying women empowerment and gender equality. We're Recording saying stopped. The, the, we're saying a, a, a promotion of women's rights, empowerment and equality so that it covers all that. On the issue of, of infrastructure, um, we, as a department, we are doing. We've requested UN Women to appoint economy uh, uh, economists for us. We are doing research. We are looking into the infrastructure so that we are able to produce a report. When we produce a report, it will help us to be able to draw up uh, the scorecard so that we are able to monitor the 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 the, the, the infrastructure uh, uh, development. However, I think, as I said earlier on, that the challenge with our department is the capacity. Uh, we, we definitely do not uh, have the capacity. On 40% procurement, I know that when government departments come, they come after having implemented, but when the members ask them that at the next meeting, we ask you to come and present on 40%, we want you to show on the programs that we are running, how women are benefiting on 40%, but also as a department, we are in the process of developing indicators. As I said, that we've agreed with uh, the DG in the presidency that we need to, to push it together so that we are able to, to fast track. We communicate, and we've been communicating for the sake of somebody who doesn't seem to appreciate that. Member Jackie, please mute yourself, Dida. Sorry. Okay, I can continue. 
Uh, yeah, thank you. So with infrastructure also, um, um, the, 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 the office, the South African office and the South African infrastructure uh, uh, project, uh, Chairperson, uh, we, we are as a department, we're meeting with them because also we're saying we want to develop indicators that we will put into that program. But also that challenge that it's, it's an elusive program. You see it there. You don't know where it started and whatever. These, these are some of the things that we've been challenging that. Who gives you the program? Where do you start? Um, how, how do women put their programs in this program? Because there are women. I know that uh, most of the time they'll come before you and say there are no women, but also they have the responsibility to develop women to participate in, 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 in those programs. So um, we, will, we will, at the next meeting, or, 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 or st is, is, study group meeting that we will have, we'll be able to list all the programs that we're trying to implement within the in infrastructure uh, uh, program so that women can benefit. Because when the president speaks always, he speaks about a trillion, that this program is worth a trillion. So we're saying, how do women get the 40% from that, from that infrastructure? So I think the, the committee can ask a meeting where we come to discuss about the infrastructure. Okay, um, thank you so much, uh, DM, uh, DG, and the team for the presentation. Uh, let's continue our discussion that site. Uh, at least it's better for us now. We can be able to engage on an informed uh, a view in terms of the, 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 the consent uh, item of, of the, in the agenda. So I propose mm -hmm. that we close the meeting and we rejoin the other meeting on the other site. Thank you so much, honorable members, also to Joe for joining the meeting. The meeting is urgent. Thank, Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.